style the news. So healthy, I'm looking photoshop. Watch him getting caught like some racist prick with a stone to toss. I hear talking shit, but they barely know how they come across. Scrolling through my feed like a bill from Congress, the final boss. Hungry for my moments, I'm fast enough like it's Ramadan. Dropping out the buck, the majority isn't looking strong. Hot takes, bad caps, trying to get your band back. Mad about the story that you stole because you can't act. Tell him. Y'all get pissy over one bad interview, he's just not that into you. Go and tell him. Imagine getting to that stage so critical and then Al don't mention you, ooh, tell him. Rise like inflation, nobody hears the specs. Talk about success and then flopping like every tater rest. And if you hate the message, you probably fucking pay for X. Argue politics as if Wikipedia is so complex. Really, I need apologies, treating everything like conspiracies, yeah, cause they gotta be. Explaining journalism from armchairs so obnoxiously. Watching most of RNC gutted like it's a Dollar Tree. Looking like idolatry, I don't mean like Oscar. There ain't no dismissals and Fanny's safe, but he gotta leave. Jason I'm about to tie to an Adolf speech right across your sleeve That's your kind of merch ditch history, you can grab some tweets Hold up, gossipy, everybody here wanna judge Live on blind items while cancer fights Olivia Munn Dictators who stay in power kill whoever they want Just like a Boeing accident that kills whatever you are. Sick in their corner, it's all out of order They seem so supportive till you hear the more that they did to their formers And who's in the chorus? The rest of you wildin' the love got you blinded This is a stewardess, this is a pilot Out of your mind, it's kinda funny that you mad at plan B Double on bad things and lose more of your team. Oh, geez. Cloud chases out in droves here when they starve and end up like Bill Maher outside of a party. Oh, no. Oh. Too soon. Bill. Were you not were you not invited? Oh. Maybe you just suck. Alright. I'm in gym mode. I have just a lot of times where I'll just lock in and get like really, really serious about fitness and, and, and get all over the place. Ultimate goal is June to be in, you know, pretty decent shape and by July to be like on point like I used to be. But I got the sweet potatoes. I got the five dollar Costco chicken. I got the meal prep containers. Keep me accountable. We're all going to keep each other accountable. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching Freestyle the News. If you like what you heard, please hit that like button like a Gen Z TikToker getting hit with the realization that the millennial that they're making fun of in the most mean space spirited way possible actually looks better for their age than they do and so then they go private their account and private their YouTube and all the work that they did is kind of erased because maybe you just shouldn't be a dick on the internet also why is this fucking lady telling you you can't skateboard at 30 what the fuck is your problem and leave a comment on your favorite bar I swear look I don't want TikTok to get banned and trust me we're gonna talk about that later on but there are a lot of people just when social media platforms come out that just act in the most outward wild way thinking that everybody is in on the joke of them being an asshole it's just it's really not hard man we're all learning everybody sucks a little bit i don't know just don't be a dick it's not hard. it's free to not be a dick that being said let's just get into this breakdown we have a lot to talk about this week and Listen, there was so much stuff that happened. It feels like there are three or four enormous stories that are getting huge coverage, but they're all on different platforms. And let's start with the TikTok ban. Dog, everybody's been talking about this one. But if you were living under a rock or just don't see air ever, you may not know that last week the House finally passed a resolution to ban TikTok unless its company ByteDance divests from the platform. And the entire hearing for this bill used some embarrassing rhetoric. This is not an attempt to ban TikTok. It's an attempt to make TikTok better. Tic-tac-toe. A winner. What? There was also a lot of back and forth and a push from Biden to pass it. However, it seems to face a pretty uphill battle in the Senate. And especially over the last like 24 hours, there's been quite a bit of bipartisan worry because of all of the people calling in. Now, they've been calling in all week at the behest of TikTok. Initially, this backfired with senators feeling more and more urged to pass this bill. But again, like I said, there seems to be some hesitancy in the last 24 hours, specifically because of the economic impact it would have on multiple businesses using TikTok. Uh, so much 
of our world is now involved with using TikTok as a media outreach platform, including candidacies, which I know is a big deal to these motherfuckers. And okay, let's also clear up what the bill exactly does. It directly mentions ByteDance and TikTok by name, and the bill also includes language that exclude businesses that execute a qualified divestiture as determined by the president, which means once ByteDance sells and the president's like, oh yeah, that seems like a good idea. Now, obviously this bill is gonna be appealed if it goes into effect. There's a lot of murky waters for it. This is not TikTok's first or last dance with being banned if I'm being honest. But everybody is losing their shit over this and it's understandable why. The language is very specifically directed to this platform. But I feel like the panic isn't necessarily a help, especially by TikTok, who when they made their initial push, like I said, actually forced some people into wanting to get it banned. It had the Streisand effect. Also, I should mention, China has banned many United States-based apps. And again, there is a big question of like, hey, what about Facebook and Instagram? They're super invasive. I will say I do understand that. However, this is specifically a foreign government with access to this information. That's the main issue. Still, companies like Meta and Google and all of these big tech companies and their access to our data is also an enormous issue that I think shouldn't be overlooked. I think the best way if you wanna keep TikTok around is to not panic and display what's panicking senators right now, which is the fact that it could have a sizable effect on the economy. And in an election year, I don't think any side wants to deal with an American public that starts to lose money because of a ban. But again, there's many ways this could go. It's not gonna happen tomorrow. It's not gonna happen even two months from now. But till then, let me know what you think in the comments. Okay, so listen, we're talking about a TikTok ban. We're talking about the fact that Steve Mnuchin might buy TikTok. Obviously, there are concerns with privacy with TikTok being owned by ByteDance, also with Bizarro John Oliver. And when it comes to everything from your viewing preferences to your biometrics to every single aspect of technology that you interact with on a daily basis in this day and age, all of that information is constantly sold. But there may be a way out of that thanks to the sponsor of today's show, Incogni. Listen, you might have heard about Incogni other places, how it reaches out to data brokers, goes through all the legalese, and gets your data taken out of their system and away from their marketplaces. But I can't stress the impact Incogni has had when it comes to me interacting with the digital world at large. For example, and I talked about this a week ago, we had a brand new washing machine installed in our building and we had to get an app in order to use it. And that app is like, hey, we're free as long as you give us your data. But I was not nervous because I know as soon as that goes through, because it's linked to my email account, and Cogni's like, oh, I got you. And that process, by the way, for people like you and me is is difficult. I have tried before I got this service to try to take data down from these places. It is an arduous infuriating process. And Incogni is such a set it and forget it solution to all of that, that makes it easier for you to go about your life in this brand new world that we live in and not have to deal with all the crap that comes with it. And again, here's my progress report when I started Incogni. Here's where we are now. New takedown notices and completions get added all the time. And yeah, that's scary. The fact that there are new people trading my data. And that's why it's important to have this. This is like the antivirus to data brokers. So listen, if you want a little bit more peace of mind with your information, with having to deal with constant targeted ads or spam calls, or if you're like, hey, this is a cool show. I want to support it in some way, shape, and or form. Go to incogni.com slash Tabani, enter in the code Tabani, and get 60% off. 60% off? Wow, that's almost as much as the amount of projects that David Zaslav has gutted at Warner Brothers. I do believe in this. I'm being absolutely serious. I pay for these guys myself. I didn't get it for free but anyway go to incognito.com slash tabani enter in the code tabani and get some peace of mind okay back to the breakdown and let's move on to the situation with stone toss so if you're like me and didn't know anything about this story till this last week and trust me I got an education. Stone Toss is a political comic strip that features flirts, these little doodly caricatures who offer various types of social satire or offer genuine political commentary on the culture at large. Now, for a large portion of time, Stone Toss was seen to be a successor to red panels, at times white nationalist and Nazi sympathizing comic strip. Do you see where this is going? Stone Toss was right wing and at times alt-right and many times sympathetic to a lot of 
Nazi-esque stuff. Featuring comics that echo racial conspiracy theories or white nationalist iconography, while at the same time spreading anti-Semitic conspiracy theories and doubts about the veracity of the Holocaust, this is not an exaggeration. The creator himself has been coy about this, originally having a section of his website that said, surprisingly, I am not a 90-year-old member of the Nationalist Socialist German Workers' Party. In my defense, cartooning has a long tradition of slaying society's sacred cows. If practice predates the United States itself, my work is similar to those often featured by Charlie Headbo published in the New York Times and shown on Family Guy, all famous non-Nazis, yeah, yeah. This kind of bullshit also pisses me off because he also has quotes that he said after that along the lines of the correct answer when somebody calls you a Nazi is, so what? And some people will say, oh, you're taking it out of context. First, fuck off. There's a difference between this is absurd and this is what I believe. And there are so many pieces of evidence. And when I have people telling me, hey, Holocaust denial isn't the same as Nazism as a defense, you've lost the fucking plot. You would not be surprised to know that multiple racially motivated tragedies and acts of violence have had stone toss pasted in to their manifestos in different ways. Comics like this one, which directly assert what racism is. This is like, this is literally what racism is. This is what it is. Or phrenology, or whatever the fuck you want to call it. And again, like I said, what's even more fucked up is Stone Toss continuously mixes in innocuous comics that tend to actually be kind of funny. He's talented at making funny stuff that jump into cultural issues and seem kind of irreverent, and then slowly mixes in more and more white nationalistic stuff as he goes on, until he ratchets up to anti-Semitism or conspiracy theory, and then he's like, whoa, it's just a joke. And before I hear any little bitch go, oh, you're just fucking sensitive, bro. Go read Cyanide and Happiness's Depressing Comic Week. There's stuff I can't even show on this show from there that is fucking hilarious. I got no problem with edgy, whoa, over the top humor. I am a rapper. I've said some wild shit myself, but I can do that and not advocate for Nazism. Well, the reason I found out about this guy this week and the reason I'm telling you is because this week, the Anonymous Comrades Collective published an article called Stone Toss Toss, revealing the identity of Stone Toss and red panels. They're the same fucking guy as Hans Christian Grabner, a security guard turned IT professional of Spring, Texas. There's a treasure trove of evidence in the article that has been linked. I will also say this site does exhibit a fair amount of bias, I'm not gonna lie about that. But then again, this guy tweets things like, oh, I can say the N-word in Japan now. The fuck? And that's some pretty horrific opinions on trans people. Not even like culture war opinions, just horrific dehumanizing opinions about other people. Uh, that I can't mention here because this video will get torpedoed. Now listen, this article was posted Tuesday and everybody seized on it. And within 24 hours, the original thread with all of the evidence was deleted, but the article obviously is left up on a different server because it's not only on X. But then Stone Toss reached out to Musk publicly on his X account and Musk began banning people under the X guidelines for doxing. Now listen, if your terms of service say you can't reveal private information about an individual who wants to remain private, but publicly interact with X without their identity being shown, if that's your guidelines, cool, consistent. But if you're gonna ban people for doxing a white nationalist and then promote and follow people for doxing a trans activist, I think you've effectively signaled why the fuck your platform doesn't have the relevancy it once did. Now, as for my feelings on the doxing of all this, because I've been asked a lot about it, doxing a private individual who wants to remain private, even somebody with abhorrent opinions, if they're just sharing their thoughts on the internet, it's not okay. Unless that person uses their opinions and those opinions are directly used on the platform to fuck with and hurt other people. The ideology of what Nazism or white nationalism, or even if you don't wanna use those words, the thing this guy espouses in his work says, it crosses a line into fucking with other people, especially when perpetrators of violence use him in their manifestos. By the way, not loosely, 
directly. This isn't like somebody heard an Eminem song going like, oh, my mom fucking sucks, all right, and then he goes and he punches somebody's mom. No, this is far worse, this is far more insidious. And the other major thing I wanted to talk about, especially when diving into the story, we all tend to think that racists and bigots and Nazis and people in white robes are all crass and untalented, uncultured and uneducated. Like we all think they're like Ben Shapiro. Right, like they'll try to make a movie and it's like trash, or they'll try to make a point and just because their point has some comfort for shitty people, those shitty people are just gonna follow them piecemeal. We like to think that they're all as ridiculous as Ben Shapiro and other motherfuckers like that. They're not. Some shitty, evil, like, douchebags are really fucking talented. And if that makes you feel uncomfortable, it should. I feel uncomfortable with it. But that's what makes them scary and dangerous. Fascism took over a country and then destabilized the world. It's gotta be good at things like presentation and media. Stone Toss Comics can be funny. He can objectively take a point, establish the normalcy and relation to that point, and then make an element of social normalcy seem absurd and relevant to the user. That's how funny political commentary works, that he understands that engine very, very well. But that talent is used to push racial stereotypes, drip feed fascistic nationalism, or diminish the dangers of Holocaust denialism, or even make you laugh at trans people who hurt themselves as the punchline is fucked up. And just so you have a primer, dark humor is funny because we realize the situation we are in is fucked up. The collective joke is that, man, this is really horrible. It's schadenfreude, it's like, oh my God, this is fucked up. It's so absurd that we have to live in this point. It's fucked up. When you start laughing and reveling at the pain and the violence perpetrated to the victims in dark humor, you lost the fucking plot. That's fucked up. That's where it goes into dangerous territory. If you want to effectively fight these horrible fucked up people, you have to remember, they can be entertaining. There's stuff that you and I both watch that can be entertaining and we can be susceptible to it, but it can also teach a really fucked up message. And that's why media literacy is important. We have to be able to discern what the messages are of the things we are watching. And again, taking this too far, all of a sudden you see red flags everywhere. I'm not saying that. I'm saying always be willing to challenge your own biases, thinking that the people who believe differently than you are stupid or untalented. They are talented, they're not stupid. And the worst grifters and villains and people who want pain and suffering on others who aren't like them in the world, those people can be very talented. And being able to discern those things and have that nuance helps people who are under that spell go, oh yeah, this food may look good, but it's terrible for me. And it's terrible for everybody here. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. Oh fuck, that story went long. Anyway, let's move on to another X story. Don Lemon interviewed Elon Musk and then immediately had a show canceled. In one of the best grand opening, grand closings of all time, Don Lemon, recently minted with his new X show, decided to sit down with Elon Musk on a wide ranging interview after his firing from CNN. And he asked Musk some pretty hard questions. Hate speech on the platform is up. Do you believe that X and you have some responsibility to moderate hate speech on the platform? that you wouldn't have to answer these questions from reporters about the Great Replacement Theory as it relates I to Democrats. I don't have to answer these questions. The Great Replacement Theory as it relates to Jewish people. Do you think that? I don't have to answer questions from reporters. Don, the only reason I'm doing this interview is because you're on the X platform and you asked for it. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I would not do interview with this interview. So you don't think, you, do you think that you wouldn't get in trouble or you wouldn't be criticized for these things? I'm or criticized that there constantly, was... I could care less. Now, like I said, shortly after that interview, Musk informed Lemon that they would not be moving forward with his show on X. But he was still allowed to promote his show on the platform. Oh, oh, thank you, Elon, thank you. Now, when Lemon went public and said, hey, Elon Musk actually doesn't support free speech, Musk responded, his approach was just CNN, but on X, as evidenced by the fact that CNN is dying. You're really the guy to talk about viewership being down? You are really the guy to talk about a platform dying? Now listen, culture warriors like Tim Young and Ian Michaels Chong, whatever the fuck his name is, are doing the same shit they always do here. I don't like Don Lemon. I think he's terrible. Don Lemon can ask hard hitting questions like he did there, but he's not like an amazing journalist. He's a sensationalist. He's always been a sensationalist throughout his entire career. But if you can't handle that interview, which by the way, you being the head of a platform means you have to. You saying you don't have to answer questions from journalists? Of course, it's a free country, but you do understand that your contemporaries 
do. And in the marketplace of ideas or the free market of capitalism, that's undercutting your platform's effectiveness and transparency. Yes, even when they're gotcha questions. And if you can't handle that, you're the guy who says he's going to save humanity? Fuck out of here. You're the, I'm supposed to you're the guy? My guy, I would feel like CNN is like the holy land compared to your platform. Uh and CNN is terrible. I, I did that plat that thing sucks. But anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. Every metric though in numbers says Twitter is not in a good place. I got another big story for you. There's so many stories on this thing. All right. Let's talk about Boeing. A whistleblower from Boeing was found dead from an apparent suicide shortly before he was set to testify. A family friend said that uh, they told them, if I die, it's not because of, you know. Also, I will say this, as soon as this news broke, not one person I have spoken about with this at all has any trust that Boeing didn't do some sus shit. Allegedly, 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 allegedly. Look, John Oliver has a really great piece he did on Boeing literally just a couple of weeks ago. And if you want the short summary of what's been going on with that company, they had this giant merger like a decade or two decades back with another plane company that was terrible. That company's planes were known for going down and killing a lot of people because that company prioritized profits over engineering. Boeing was well known as an engineering juggernaut. They were super well known for their high quality of putting the build of the plane and their engineering know-how above everything else, even if it loses them money in the short term. And that gained them an enormous amount of trust and reputation with the American public, with other vendors, with the United States government. But after that merger, there was a battle between company culture. And guess who won? The shitty company. And the profit-driven business and the company cutthroat culture had a diminishing effect on the quality assurance of how these planes were made. That's why you have things like the Max falling out of the sky, losing wheels, losing door plugs. This whistleblower is even said to have left a plane when he found out that it was a 737 Max. Just walk off his flight because he didn't want to fly on it. And Boeing is looking fucked. If they were trying to do something sneaky, it's not working because their stock price is tanking and obviously this is that's kind of why they were doing it. This all looks about as legitimate as a Vladimir Putin election. And the DOJ and the others aren't happy either, especially since they also erased footage of the door plug, just magically overwritten. Oh really, Boeing? I don't wanna make everybody panic because it's very easy to panic when these thing kind of things happen. Flying is still technically and statistically the safest mode of transportation. If you want, there are ways to look up the plane you are are flying on before you get on it but we'll have to wait and see uh let me know what you think in the comments uh man what a fucked up company also a quick update on the boeing situation uh another panel fell off bro what the fuck what are you doing boeing like what the fuck this is it is insane how bad this company is in the shit. Like if there was ever a smoking gun, we are watching smoke billow from the gun in public in 4K, in 8K. It's in a, it's bad. This feels like a bank during the 2008 financial crisis bad. Dude, like, like almost every day, bad information about Boeing planes is coming out. I don't know how from any sort of angle they salvage their reputation without major changes at their airline and admitting they fucked up. Because even without a whistleblower, oof, you are, you're, you're looking fucked, boy. And that's going to do it for today, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching today's show. Please check out Zed Talks. Please check out Freestyle on the News. Sign up for Too Soon Crew. We got a town hall coming up and some new merch. Anyway, my name is Zed Tabani, and I'll see y'all soon. Let's go!